Chrissy Cameron is a, a good friend of KCTS. She drops by and fixes wonderful food from time to time during our pledge drives. But she's never fixed this, I'm here to tell you. This is Harvest and Praline Souffle with a rum sabayon. Is that about right? Sabayon. Sabayon, there you go. Okay, we, uh, we'll find out what sabayon is. The praline I know, the souffle I know, but I've never seen them together before. So go for it, Chrissy. All right, well, the origin of this dish was to use up squash. I was working at a culinary school actually with Kathy's husband as one of my co-instructors there when we were donated hundreds of pounds of squash every year. So the point then became, what will we use it up on? Soup, salad, cheesecake, and this we did a souffle. And I was taught soufflés by Kathy when I was myself a culinary student. And of course... No more fear of soufflés. No, no. That was, her, that was the main point of the handout. Never fear soufflés again. So I thought, great, we have a banquet for 240. Let's serve them soufflés. Well, that'll get rid of your yeah. fear of soufflés. It got rid of the fear. It got rid of some squash. And I put a lot of components in it. And I left them in this recipe because even though it's fussy, sometimes just the process of right. cooking something for your family or friends is just so wonderful. It's kind of nice to take, take your time yes. and, and get, watch a lot of components come together. Together. So this is the praline portion okay. and all we have in here is a cup of sugar and about a third of a cup of water all and right. it's boiling up here and very simple and the other great thing about this is it's going to make more than you'll need for the recipe which is fine because you usually end up eating half of them. You eat up half of them. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah I have another garnish here that's gone down by half after people visited yeah. in the yeah. kitchen today. You, um, it's great on waffles, on puddings, on ice cream toppings. Um, there's a couple points here. Um, we can go ahead, I think, now and stir in the, okay. the pecans. And uh, I was in a praline kick when I came up with this recipe, and they went into everything I made. And you're going to just take this to a hard crack state, and that's when the water is pretty much boiled off and the sugar is just molten. And you're just going to stir these pecans around here. A little bit golden, or...? You know, if it go, it doesn't get golden. Okay. Um, usually it turns to sugar before it okay. reaches that point. So I'd say about now it would All be right. done. You need to be sure and put it on an oiled pan. And that's really the only secret there because... If you ever want to get them off. <laughs> you will be using a, a screwdriver chipping it that's off right. in, in hunks if you don't use an oiled pan. It's going to sit like this. It will get hard rather quickly, okay. within 15-20 minutes. When it does, you just lift it all out, break it into chunks, stick it in your food processor. Okay. And you'll end up with this. Get and, that. Yep, and you do need to nice. store it in the freezer in between use or the oil's going to make the sugar go all soupy on you. But as I said, Yummy. ice cream sundaes Yummy. Went with the leftovers. So that's pretty much the only trick of the praline. Okay. So we're going to do souffle base now. All right. And what I like to do first is um, off the heat, I use my egg yolks and I make sure they're at room temperature or they can react badly with the sugar and almost do a, a cooked appearance here. So I like to mix my egg yolks and my sugar. That's very briefly. And then I have two cups half and half. I'm gonna add a little bit of that. It's looking more and more like squash. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when we put this on our menu at the banquet, we called it harvest souffle just because some people were kind of put off by squash. Ooh, squash right. for dessert. Oh, I love squash. Well, it's a wonderful anyway, thing. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway. This is a um, Hubbard squash. Yep. I like to use one that's very orange in color. Japanese pumpkins are good. And um, do you, um, how do you cook your squash when you do it? Do you turn them upside down and bake them? Or? I do. I turn them upside down. I roast them, check it 45 minutes to see if okay. they're pierced easily. And then I let them cool and I food process them. And I prefer that to boiling. I, like, I think it caramelizes a bit, and mm -hmm. that adds a sweetness to the flavor, and you, it's not all kind of damp. and kind of condenses all those good exactly. flavors together. Okay. And here's the base. Now the base is what? The base is flour, egg yolk, sugar, and half and half. Okay. okay. And, and how much of each is in the recipe? There's two cups of half and half, half a cup of sugar, three quarters of a cup of flour and five egg yolks. Okay. And that is why you need fear souffles because with most egg recipes, if you've got the half and half an egg yolk, you reach a point where it can break. Right. And by that, the egg yolks actually congeal, they separate from the cream and 
it all goes in the garbage can and you start again. But the flour is going to cause it to become very thick and it's going to keep it from breaking. That's another one of those little secret ingredients. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so here's the point now. It just it stirs and stirs and stirs. And then we're going to add the other ingredients and the roasted pureed squash and the... Yep. And just a teaspoon of vanilla and the pr pralines. Ooh, that's going to be nice. Really, really fun. Fun combination. Well, there's lots of things you could do. You could add hazelnuts versus mm -hmm. pecans. You could put in some plumped up currants. You could add pumpkin pie spice. I didn't want this one to be spicy. Right. I was trying to get away from the pumpkin pie flavor. Fried cranberries would exactly. be kind of fun in there. This time of year is great to do that. Like berries would be wonderful. And yeah, I did 240 of these. I did four batches of 60. Wow. With a mixer, about, <laughs> the bowl was about so large, and I, I had my I, uh, sleeve up to my um, shoulder here with my arm, and they're whipping it up because there wasn't a spatula quite large enough. And you taught me the importance, too, of using clean hands, yes. which I'm going to do. Clean hands will mix the egg whites into the souffle base without... Um, causing the egg whites to deflate as much. Right. It just much thir more thoroughly and it gives you a lighter, fluffier souffle. Well, it's still taking its time here. It's coming along. Let me see. Up a little bit more. There we go. This is going to thicken up very quickly all of a sudden once it reaches yes, the right temperature. Yes, all of a sudden it'll be poof, it'll be done. Yep. And then, you are those candied? Candied orange peel. Orange peels. Are those going to go on the top? They are. Yeah. Um, my, I made this recipe up last week and I hadn't made it for a while uh -huh. because um, Nicole had asked me to do something, submit a different recipe from the one I us originally sent in. And my mother said what she really loved about this, she'd never had it before, was that every bite was different. Oh, because nice. Because we've buttered and sugared the mold here. It's softened butter very liberally and then dipped in sugar and you store it cold until you use it. So that gives you a buttery crunch, sugary right. crunch. Then the souffle itself is lightly sweet. It's creamy. The top is all puffy and crisp. But then you've got the praline bits, which are sugary and nutty. You've got this orange zest that every once in a while you get a little a taste of. Nice. And then the sabayon. I'm is, gonna I'm gonna take over for you here. It's egg yolks. And you can chat a little bit with more about a lot it. of rum. And please use premium rum because there's a ton of rum in here. And if you use a cheaper rum, it'll be um, a harsh taste. So I used a name brand rum in there. And sugar, cooked up, chilled, and then whipped in with some flour. I'm getting you very let, close here. Can you let yep. me know when we're ready for the squash? Goes, we're getting pretty close. Okay. And, it, and it does get thick very yeah. quickly. Mm -hmm. You say one and it'll go. Less than a minute ago, that was very watery. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think we're <laughs> Not ready. Not anymore. Okay. Squash. And that is six tablespoons of the praline powder, and you'll put more on top okay. when they come out. Vanilla, one teaspoon. Little vanilla. Okay. All righty. A little and workout. Now, it is. If I, if I, <laughs> now, if I were to make this for all at once, I would do 15 at a time. Or This makes about 12 to 15, okay. so it's good for a uh, holiday-type dinner. I'm just yes. going to make enough for one here just to show real quickly so I'm not mixing these in. It's pretty hot. Um, I'm going to be a little cautious when I first stick my hands in there, but it's going to use um, roughly about a quarter cup yeah. there of the base. And slightly more of the egg whites there. And then I'm just going to very, fingers open, I'm not, mix it as quick as I can. You want to do it while the base is still warm, but again, don't burn yourself. Ah, and then into cups. Into so the nice. sugared, buttered, chilled souffle cup. Because I I'm like glad to see that somebody actually made these souffles that I taught. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. 240 of them, and everyone enjoyed. <laughs> that's so great. All right, and that's it. It's a lot of prep work, but it comes together really quickly when you're done there. And it would go into a 375 okay. degree home oven, 350 convection if you're lucky enough to have it. And we have one in the oven. We do, and I'm gonna I'm gonna pull that out. Okay. Oh my goodness, look at that. Alrighty. Perfect. Did she do it right, Teach? She did it right. <laughs> very good. Right. Very, very good. I guess. Set that on a plate here. 
That looks fantastic. Yeah. Christian. I've made these before in metal molds where we unmolded mm -hmm. them, but when I have access to the little white cups, no. George, will you here, you bet. thanks. I like to use the little white cups and keep them in there. Thank I think you. that they're pretty. Okay, I'm gonna break the top just a little bit and add a good two tablespoons, one ounce of the sabayon. That recipe's in in the book. It is all the the garnish deep, step by step in both the lemon zest and the pralines in the book, and a little bit of the orange zest, and it's sunk Very in nice. there. Uh. Well, I don't want to ruin the presentation, but if you think I'm going to let this go without we'll tasting it, just have to have it, a, little, uh -huh. a little taste in the middle there. Mm. That is so good. That oh, is good. delicious. Okay. You have never tasted squash like that in your life, ever. By the way, uh, did you did you enjoy that last recipe? That was Chrissy Cameron. Uh, Chrissy is a KCTS employee who feeds all of our volunteers all the time, and uh, she's not only a great chef but a really wonderful person. So it's uh, it's fun to see Chrissy get some recognition there. Um, let's uh, talk about becoming a member of KCTS. Um, if you've been procrastinating, if you've been hoping that your neighbor. That was Chrissy Cameron making her a really great harvest and praline souffle. And that's one of the recipes we tried out at Dessert Week here at KCTS the week before the show aired. And uh, it turns out great. Delicious taste, moist, that creamy filling. I mean, it is fabulous. And uh, we're very grateful for her, too, because she makes um, food for the pledge volunteers here and so if you're ever interested in volunteering for pledge you know you're going to get a great meal from Chrissy and uh, this show really is made possible by a lot of volunteers our viewers volunteer to send in the recipes we have volunteers answering the phone and even the cooks that come on the air they have to bring all their own materials their own ingredients their own pots and pans and